You know, coronum and pupa patterns, despite their simplicity, always seem to be in a constant state of flux and evolution. And my Western Woofta is no different. Hi everyone, I'm Phil Rowley and welcome to my YouTube channel and to my fly tying bench. If you've been here before, thanks for dropping by once again. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I provide fly tying and fly fishing video content that I hope makes your next day on the water just that little bit more successful. Today I'm tying for you a coronamid pupa pattern that worked really well for me this past season called the Western Woofta. It's my variation of an English coronamid pupa or buzzer pattern called the Woofta pupa. It uses fuchsia colored mylar in its thorax. I've tweaked that design a little bit to reflect the bead head styles we use most often here in North America. So join me at my bench. I'll show you how to tie this simple but deadly little pattern. Let's tie the Western Woofta. So into the jaws of the vise, I've placed a Daiichi. Um, this is the Alec Jackson Crystal Covert Nymph Hook. Um, it's basically a Daiichi 1760 with a chrome coating on it, if you will. It's a size 13. These are got some weird sizings on them. So this is approximately a 14. A 15 would be a 16 and an 11 would be a 12. And those would be the sizes I tie this fly in. Uh, 12, 14, 16. I've also slid on a uh, 332 uh, brass bead, black nickel, with the wide end facing forward um, because we're going to put a set of uh, gills on here. So I'm just going to attach some black tying thread with a minimum of wraps. I don't want a lot of bulk here because I've got a bead I have to slide over the gills when they're done. So I'm going to bring that tying thread back up just back from the hook eye. For the gills, I like to use on my coronamids white uni floss. I know uni stretch is popular. The reason I like the uni floss is because it fluoresces. So at depth, if you're fishing this fly deeper, which is often the case when we coronamid fish uh, 10, 12, 15, 20 feet down, uh, this will catch any available light and help my fly stand out a little better amongst the naturals or just get found by the fish. So. That's what I believe in. So you'll be welcome to use the uni stretch, of course, if you want as well. So I've just taken a strand and I'm just going to a couple of wraps to lay that on. And then I'm going to basically figure eight this a little bit. Just put a couple of wraps to get um, almost like a pair of antlers on this. And then we're just going to move, pull those forward and push them up against the hook eye like so to push them forward. And when we trim these, these are going to resemble very realistically, um, the natural coronamid pupas, a uh, pair of gills that kind of come out the top of their head. So we're just going to trim that off and then we're going to reattach our tying thread. So I'm going to push this forward like so, and that will take care of those gills and push them forward. That's why we have the wide end open to make sure we have in this case enough um, area, if you will, that we can uh, uh, push that bead forward. So we're going to put a red butt on this fly. That's optional and I'm just going to use some red tying thread. So I'm just going to take some red tying thread, in this case UTC 70, so I can spin it flat by spinning the bobbin counterclockwise to flatten the wraps and floss them out. So we're just going to spin that bobbin counterclockwise. You can see that slowly taking the twist out and the thread is starting to floss up right here and that'll allow us just to have nice open flat wraps that don't take up a lot of bulk. We're going to move that down and we may do that spinning operation a few times, like so. And we're just gonna walk that thread down the shank slightly, just about to the back of the crush down barb. And then we're gonna spin it and go right back up to where we Initially tied this in and tie this off and replace the thread. So again, we're just flattening these wraps by spinning the bobbin, close touching turns, one wrap adjacent to the other, nice, smooth, even body because this is a slender pattern and we don't have the luxury of a lot of uh, materials to cover up any uh, 
deficiencies in our underbody. So we have to be diligent with how we form these anytime you're tying coronament patterns. pattern. So we've tied that off. Now we're going to introduce some black UTC 70. This is the primary body color. So we'll just get that started. Come in, nip that off. Now for the ribbing, we're going to use a subtle rib. In this case, some extra small UTC silver. Um, you could certainly, if you don't have that handy, um, a single strand of silver crystal flash would work as well. Very narrow and subtle. So what we're going to do is just take a length of this uh, silver wire, get that tied in behind the bead, give that bobbin that counter spin, and we're just going to see how this thread is flossing out, nice flat wraps, securing this wire down the side of the shank, about halfway between the point and the barb. And that gives you that little red butt peeking out. We're just going to spin this counterclockwise again to flatten the wraps. And we're just going to use the thread to build up the body. The body of this fly is thread. Of course, you could certainly use black flashaboo or another black material if you will, but the thread is there. It's easy to work with and you don't run the risk of adding extra bulk by tying in additional materials. So we've just moved that right up. We'll give it another spin. I'm going to go back a little bit. Probably about halfway down the shank. Just to build up a subtle, subtle taper. Don't overdo it. So again, flattening those wraps out. And then moving that thread forward. Up. And then we're going to tie off the black. Introduce the final color we're going to add to this fly, which is burnt orange, UTC 70 burnt orange, or a, uh, a rust brown coloration. This is going to help suggest the wing pad area of the natural pupa. So we've just got that tied in. And now we're going to add the wufta part. And this comes from the English pattern. The wufta is an English coronamid pattern tied what Many in North America refer to as a buzzer style with no bead, wing case, thorax, wing pads, those kind of things. And the thorax area is made up of this holographic fuchsia tinsel or flashaboo. So that's what we're going to do here. I call it the Western Wufta because we use a lot of beads on our coronamids out in Western North America. And uh, so we put, I'm putting the, the uh, signature fuchsia thorax, if you will, um, behind the bead. So I'm just going to take a section of, of this uh, holographic mylar, bind it in right behind the hook like so, and then we're just going to walk that fuchsia back about the same distance, or slightly longer than the bead, the length of the bead, and then stop in reverse directions and wind it right back up to the rear of the bead and then we're going to tie it off with just a minimum of wraps so two over the top one in front to lock and then we're going to trim that off then we're going to take our wire ribbing now and we're going to wind this forward the target being seven ribs there's two three four five six yes we're going on to that fuchsia thorax and seven and then come up tie off our wire directly behind the bead a couple of wraps i put my thumbnail right tight on the joint of where i tied it off and using a pulling and twisting emotion helicopter and break off that wire so there's a couple things we're going to do we're going to build up a little um, burnt orange thorax i guess if you will to a second part of the thorax in addition to the fuchsia just to suggest the, the wing pad area so we're just going to pull down i've given that a spin and we're just going to build up a very thin band of this burnt orange thread directly behind the bead pull down and whip finish three turns is ample because this fly is going to get a uh, you know a durable coating and then very sharp scissors, or you can use a straight edge too, is just come in and trim away 
the thread and tying portions done. And then we're going to come in with our scissors and trim the gills. Now the gills are, my proportions for gills are always the same length as the bead regardless of hook size. So if you've got an eye for that, you can just come in and trim. But if you're still worried your gills may be too long, just fold them back over the bead, lay your scissors right against the back of the bead and give them a little snip like that. And then you're always guaranteed to have your, um, your gill length proper. So we just take that like that. And the final thing is just to give this a coating uh, to add durability and shine. So I'm going to use some of the Solera's Bone Dry. It's excellent uh, body coating material. A very thin applicator brush. It's got great viscosity, meaning it, it's, uh, it doesn't run all over the place. It's thin, uh, but it stays basically where you put it. So as long as you put it on and uh, not too aggressively. So I'm just coating this all the way around. We'll get that back into place. I like the little bit of ridging to show through, the little bit of those bumps. And then once we're, we're happy with that, we're going to come in with our curing light and just zap that. And you can sort of see how those gills fluoresce as well. Again, that's why I like the Unifloss. So we're just going to make sure I'm going to come up underneath. Don't look into the, into the light, obviously. It's not good for you. But there you have it. The completed Western Woofta. Simple, easy to tie, and deadly on still water trout.